Alaska has always been known for being a state that just really dishes it out to you in conditions, whether it's weather or the terrain. This week we're hunting Roosevelt elk on Raspberry Island. It's a small island on the map near Kodiak, but when you get your feet on it, it gets a whole lot bigger. There's less than 100 elk on this island, but they're Roosevelt's, so they're hard to find anywhere. Little did we know, this adventure was just about to begin. We all know the challenges involved in a do-it-yourself hunt in our home state, but traveling to a wilderness region of Alaska and setting foot on unknown lands where large predators roam, well, that puts a whole new twist on a do-it-yourself hunt. This week on Nosler's Magnum TV, it's Team Magnum's James Bryan and Survivor Raspberry Island. You know, I have to admit, a year ago, I wouldn't have been able to find Raspberry Island on a map. We left Missoula, Montana at 7.05 this morning. Four flights to get here. The planes keep getting smaller, but the anticipation keeps getting bigger. But then I used the Magnum Hunt Club's tag draw service. Pretty soon, I had drawn the most coveted elk tag in Alaska. It's pretty cool, though, when you can be on Raspberry Island by supper time. So, not a bad travel at all. You know, even though this was a total do-it-yourself adventure and we didn't have any guides whatsoever, we knew we had to live somewhere. And, you know, I wasn't terribly interested in living on this little island with brown bears running everywhere. So I got on OutfittersRating.com and we found some fishing lodges. This is the one we chose, Raspberry Island Remote Lodge. Most of our guests are come in the summertime and enjoy the fishing and, and hiking and kayaking and bear viewing and, and things along those lines. Um, we, we do enjoy the hunters that come here in the fall and uh, stay at our lodge as a base camp. And they've got all the amenities you could ever want. They've got hot tub, they've got fabulous food, great accommodations. So, you know, even though it's a do-it-yourself, we were well taken care of, and you know, you just can't beat this kind of adventure. Great place, even for a big game hunter, to use these fishing lodges as a base camp. Transport boats take you out, drop you off, and you can do your own thing if you got the guts to do it. Nice. Is it there? Yeah, you're right there. That's Good. perfect. Raspberry Island is 14 miles long and 7 miles wide at its widest point. You know, it's no wonder why they released Roosevelt Elk on Raspberry Island in the late 20s. It really has a Pacific Northwest feel. The mountains are 2,200 feet tall, and there's a lot of them. They get 74 inches of rain a year, and, you know, the negative to that is it grows a lot of what all of us hunters just absolutely love alpine spruce, scrub alder, and devil's club to wade through. You know, the elk are really good at surviving. They, they like to stay a long ways away from the beach, which is where you have to start and end all of your hunts. And uh, of course, you're right in the middle of wild brown bear country. You know, they're all over this island. Nosler's Magnum TV is brought to you by Nosler, load Nosler, own the shots, and by Nikon. Dunham's High Caliber Ranch, Gobble and Grunt Outfitters, 
the NRA ILA, and Thompson Center Arms, America's master gun maker. This portion of Nosler's Magnum TV is brought to you by Goblin Grunt Outfitters. You know, Alaska has always been known for being, you know, a state that just really dishes it out to you with conditions, whether it's weather or the terrain. Well, we just got dropped off this morning on Raspberry Island by a transport boat. We're on a totally unguided hunt here, do it yourself. And there's a little less than 100 Roosevelt elk on this island. They were let go here in the late 20s. And it's our job this week to find them in five days. And our first day is, uh, it's kicking on us pretty good. Right away we got sideways wind and it's supposed to come and go like that all day long. Since it's unguided, we had no information starting this hunt, so we went uptown to Max Sporting Goods, got a little local knowledge of where we might find them, how we might hunt them. From there we just looked at some maps and picked about four or five different day hunts, uh, you know, from five to eight mile hikes through this stuff, and just we're starting on our first one. And day one. Haven't seen an animal yet, seen a lot of bear tracks and bear scats, so I have a feeling we'll be bumping into some of them. General rule of thumb, from the top of the mountain, if it looks a foot tall, it's three. If it looks three, it's eight or 10. It's, it's daunting, it's kind of an overwhelming feeling. You're going through new country that you don't know, you're looking for animals you haven't seen, you, you know they exist somewhere, but it's a, it's a big task and it's a big adventure. You've got brown bears to worry about, um, you know, you've got steep, steep, slippery country to navigate and you need to get back to the beach every night. Um, it is a real adventure, uh, but as this week progressed, I mean, we had no idea just how much of an adventure we were in for. This brush in this country is really deceiving. When you look down out and you're looking at animals, it looks like it might be two or three foot tall, it's 10 or 12 foot tall, so you really gotta be careful. You can wear yourself out in this low country. I'm thinking for today, our best bet is probably to climb up higher where we can see two drainages instead of just one and get up where we can we move. We spent all morning, it's almost noon, we spent all morning just uh, covering a mile and a quarter through this brushy stuff. If we get up on top, there's ridges here that go for miles. That's probably what we're gonna have to do to find the elk here. I think I'd rather hike the high country than swim through this brush any day. We looked all day for fur and uh, I think we found some. Late this afternoon, we saw way off in the distance some elk. So tomorrow, we're gonna go at them. It's gonna be a huge day. We're gonna be, uh, we're gonna be hiking a bit. So it's time to go back to the lodge, heat up, rest up, be ready for the day. You know, th there's a lot of challenges uh, associated with living out here in, in the middle of, of nowhere or everywhere. <laughs> But the, the challenges are well worth the, re the rewards. I mean, I can't imagine living anywhere else. Um, my folks bought this piece of property, just a bare piece of property, in 1982. And then we moved down in 83 when I was five. And they built everything, um, all the buildings on the land. And uh, most of the wood, um, you know, in the lodge and, and the other buildings is milled from a chainsaw, or with a chainsaw sawmill from the, the local native spruce. And. Uh, Tiffany and I uh, took over in 2008, and been here since. Been here since then. Boy, when we peeked over, it was like a whole other planet on the other side of that ridge. If there was a bigger bull around, I didn't care. I was taking this one if I got a chance. This portion of Nosler's Magnum TV is brought to you by Dunham's High Caliber Ranch.
this morning, a transport boat dropped us off in the beach down there for two solid hours. We've been climbing straight up, looking at the side of the mountain and our knees. Ground about as steep as dirt will grow grass. 1,500 vertical feet right up here, about 100 yards. We get on a ridge. It takes us as far on this island as we want to travel in a day. And that's what we got to do. Get up high, look at open country until we find the herd. Boy, just about time we got to the saddle, we heard this roar over the hill. And, you know, we'd been on the lee side of it up till then. Boy, when we peeked over, it was like a whole nother planet on the other side of that ridge. And studied the herd for quite a while. I could see a pretty decent animal, but then off in the grass, I could see one that really looked like he'd be a shooter. I really wanted to get a closer look at that bull. There's maybe 60, 80 animals down in this low bottom. I have no idea how we're going to get on them, but one thing's for sure, we're going to get out of this wind, we're going to head down a little bit, try to find some kind of cover. We are on final stock on herd of Roosevelt elk. Five, six hundred yards in front of us. Time to dump the pack, get my shooting sticks, and get rid of these noble, these uh, rain pants. through the bush and I could see that the animals were still there, bedded, had no idea we were there. All right, let's go do it. You know, from two miles off, these things looked pretty big. From 250 yards, they looked even bigger. All right, our bull is right here, right side of the herd. We're just gonna have to belly up here and set up on the sticks through that gap, I suppose. These are Roosevelt elk. Their, their bodies are a third larger than our Rockies. Their horns are a third smaller than our Rockies. I mean, the cows would stand up, and they, those cows are as big as the bulls we typically hunt in Montana. Those cows are gonna move off. Those cows are like Goliath. I mean, can you believe that? Those are huge animals. There were several bulls in the herd. Uh, there was a nice five point that was bedded kind of on the left side of the bunch, but I just didn't think that was a herd bull. I kept looking and looking, and pretty soon I spotted some horns sticking up out of the grass, and it appeared to be a six by six. I needed to verify it. He's up. Pretty sure he's a six. Yep. Yep. He's a six. Roosevelt elk, baby. We've just done the impossible here on Raspberry Island. Day two of their gun season, I drew the only non-resident bull tag, and we got the herd bull. But I had no idea of the sheer massiveness of this animal until we walked up on it. We shot the biggest one on the island, and there he is. <laughs> I mean, when you're seeing this thing, this obviously is no Rocky Mountain elk. Their horns are 30% less than a rocky and their bodies are 30 percent more so when you're looking at these horns they are deceivingly large because you're putting them on a huge body broke a couple times and it's just massive i can't even get my hand around it in the second position look at that if i was watching that on tv there's two things that i'd want to know first one being what kind of a bullet 
can tank a 1,300 pound animal like that. And that was a 180 grain Acubon out of a 300 Win Mag. Trophy grade ammo. But the second thing I'd wanna know is, how are we getting this thing out of the middle of this island? I don't know the answer to that yet. But we'll just work at it a little bit as we go. Little did we know, this adventure was just about to begin. And on these day hunts, you've got a big job. You've got to find the animal, you've got to stalk and harvest the animal, then you've got to get it taken care of so that it's relatively bear-proof, because you're not taking an animal like that out the same day you kill it. Ah. Hey, bear. Hey, bear. This portion of Nosler's Magnum TV is brought to you by the Magnum Hunt Club. When we're out enjoying our right to hunt, it's easy to forget about what's happening in Washington, D.C. But just because you're not thinking about the politicians doesn't mean they're not thinking about you. They are always up to something. And if you're not happy with what they're up to, please listen to this message from my friend Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris, fact number 235. Contrary to popular belief, America is not a democracy. It's a Chuck Tatorship. <laughs> I always get a kick out of those Chuckisms, but of course I can't decide alone how the country is run. If you're worried about the direction our country's going, you're in good company. Too many people have forgotten our nation was founded to protect freedom, like our Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. Freedom is not about what government can do for us, but about keeping government from doing things to us. There's only one way to protect our freedoms, by voting for the candidates who support them. I hope you won't be missing an action on election day. Register to vote. I'm Chuck Norris, and I approve this message. For more information, go to triggerthevote.org. You know, Raspberry Island has a pretty good population of brown bear. And that means one thing. You take care of your meat just a little bit different than you normally would. Because you're not taking an animal like that out the same day you kill it. You're taking it out the following day. When we went in to pack out our animal, we were able to, to get a local fella, Cody Jacobson, who was a packer for us on this trip to uh, come along with us. And you know, it was really good to have somebody that knows the country intimately, that's been in the area, to go in there just in case the worst case scenario happens. We've hiked up this valley this morning to come and get our elk out. We're a thousand yards off. We just put the scope on him. We can't find the carcass already. And I can see what appears to be a dug up spot, probably a cache where he's either consumed and or buried our elk quarters and all the meat that we boned off that carcass. Very likely. Yeah. All right, well, let's see what we got left here. Ha! Come on, ah! We're gonna make a lot of noise going in here. Casey's down sitting in there because we don't want him sitting in the alders on us and surprising us. Hey, bear. Hey, bear. Getting in there in a real bad situation and being able to make the best of a, what could have potentially been disaster uh, was also a tremendous sense of accomplishment. We got a big old grizz cache here. Okay, that's a serious bear doing all that quick. You know, this is the kind of situation that, I mean, honestly, you hope you never see. You hear about it, you read about it. But those are just stories. I mean, this one was happening to us, and it was for real. What we're doing here is trying to salvage edible portions, doing what we can. You hope this never happens, but sometimes it does. We're in the wilderness. There's big bears roaming at large, and one of them claimed our elk. It, apparently, it's gone now. Must have got a belly full, and it's moved off somewhere. We were able to salvage three good quarters. So we did what we were supposed to do, did what we're required to do. And uh, we got some good elk meat here. We lost the head and the horns, but that's no big deal. That's a small price to pay to have to get into a situation like this and get out of it. It still makes it a little bittersweet when you pack off the mountain and you've got, you've got your uh, quarter on your back and you know you left some part of that animal 
uh, to a bear. Put some distance between us and the cache. Hey, bear! But you know what? That's the country we hunt in, and bears are a part of that country. Here's your bear, boys. Right there. So here we are with about 80 pounds of meat each on our backs. And we got a big old brown bear down here in the creek, right where we were wanting to go. And he came right off of the beach where we left all of our emergency gear in case we had to spend the night here. The good news is the wind didn't come up, so we're probably not going to have to spend the night here. And he's headed back up to eat these three quarters that we took out of his cache. Big old animal. They own this place. You know, I hunt for a lot of reasons, and trophies are, are down on the list. Uh, I hunt for the adventure, for the people, uh, for the stories to tell and share. James pulled off an incredible hunt on Raspberry Island. While he lost some of his elk to an aggressive brown bear, it was still an adventure to remember. I hope you'll get out soon and enjoy the great outdoors, because the best way to protect our rights is to exercise them. Until next week, I'm Chris Cox with the National Rifle Association, protecting our Second Amendment freedoms and hunting heritage. Nosler's Magnum TV is brought to you by Brownells, the world's largest supplier of firearms, accessories, and gunsmithing tools. And by Nosler. Dunham's High Caliber Ranch. Outfittersrating.com. And the Magnum Hunt Club. Your adventure is our business. Closed captioning is brought to you by the NRA ILA.